Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here and I'm privileged to be with the entertainment reporter and the winner of 2019's I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Richard Reed. Oh, Hi, Richard. That, that's the I I live, you know, former royalty and all. It's, <laughs> it's you know, once you're royal, King you're always jungle. royal. Yeah. yeah. That's I got a big title for you. <laughs> I know. I like it. I like it. It's it's very odd that it's been a couple of years. It feels just like yesterday, you know, and I'm a super fan of the show. Oh yeah, and with just the new season, you yeah. got to go to the after party and it, you're still really living in that whole vibe <laughs> you know, of being Am the King I living of the in the past? Yeah. I don't know. But I, I I was just super, super excited, and I just am proud of anyone who really commits and, and does that. It oh. is super challenging, yeah. super challenging. Well, as you know, we're going to talk about it a little okay. later on because right. I really want to know all about okay. it. Okay. First person I've interviewed that's been on the show. Well, I have interviewed other people, but they went on after they came on the show. So I want to okay. hear all about all the right. experience. Whenever I watch the show, I'm like, how are they doing this? Like, I really take my hat off to you. It, it's hard just watching it, let alone doing it. So, <laughs> but for our audience, you know, I'm sure a lot of people don't know, but we met at the Jack and the Beanstalk pantomime. What was it back in 2019? That's right. I think that... I had just come out of the jungle. Yeah. And uh, that was my first time actually on the stage, and it was so impressive to be at the State Theater. I mean, that's it's that's a beautiful theater. That's Sydney history, mm. absolutely right there. And you know, I went in to the jungle thinking I was going to have one part. And then when I came out of the jungle, I had a different part. And I said, well, <laughs> I thought I was gonna play this character. And they're like, well, we really didn't know if you could sing, can you? And I'm like, well, no. <laughs> I mean, I can, but In the so shower. <laughs> I, I was very happy with it. It was it was a great experience yeah. and everyone worked with was very lovely. Well, I just feel like the time has gone so quickly because you know, yeah. I've been trying to get you on the show since then. As he said, very persistent I am trying to get you on, but it's great to finally have you on now, beginning of 2021. Yeah. What a great start to the year. New right? year, new you. It's actually, I was just saying to my cameraman before, this is the first in-person interview I think I've done for over a year. Really? Because they've all just been online, you know, yeah. with lockdown and everything and people not really wanting to catch up face to face. So thank you for having us here in your beautiful home as well. And I can't wait to chat about all your projects. You know, I've been actually a big fan of yours for many, many years and I would actually call you an inspiration oh, well, for what you. I do That's so very thank sweet. you very sweet but actually before we do talk about that I want to go back to the beginning a little bit yes. take you down memory okay. lane and find out how you got to where you are today you know a lot of people work really hard especially in this entertainment industry as we know and when I was researching you I just noticed you've done a lot of education yes uh, yes you want me I to have tell, yeah you no, want no, to tell the a, audience no it's oh, fine you, it's fine I've, I've gone to got. a number of different colleges yeah. uh, in California in New York uh, in Seattle Washington where I lived for a while I love education I love to learn new things and and I'm always thinking you know you don't know what you don't know mm, until yeah, you absolutely. find out you don't know it. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm a big well, believer maybe in that. I should figure it out. So, yeah, I've always loved learning and trying to better myself. So how many years of education do you think you've had in total oh, then? God. Like, was it, was it one after the other or did you have, like, no, breaks no, in between? I, I took a break. You know, I, at, at one time I wanted to be a, a film critic. Oh. At another time I wanted cool. to be an actor for a while. And then I decided to get into journalism. And that's what led me to entertainment journalism. Mm. So, but I did go to school for journalism and I, through that, I was able to get a good work experience and then impress them so much that they hired me to work the graveyard shift from that's 12 a.m. <laughs> to 9 a.m. So, you know, I feel like I've done the hard yards. Oh, me too. I've done some gra graveyard shifts and your sleep pattern just goes out the window, yeah, doesn't no it? Yeah, there's no social life. <laughs> there's no nothing. No. no. And you're tired all the time. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Uh, back even when I would do the Today Show here, I'd come down and visit here, you just really have no life and you're always a zombie. You always mm. feel like something's not quite right. Because you're still so jet lagged as well when you were just visiting. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did that for quite a while. Oh. Yeah, I worked on that show Domestic Blitz back in the day. That yeah. was a great experience, but I was flying here for two, three weeks and I'd fly back to America for a couple of weeks. I just wish the the entertainment division would have talked to the news division so we just could have had a good schedule, but mm. you know, when everybody wants you, what can you do? Exactly. You only have one of you. <laughs> <laughs> there <laughs> you go. All, All right. those were the days. <laughs> 
So you have been working in the industry since 1999. So what's that? Nearly mm. 22 years of mm-hmm. experience. Good on so. you. And yeah. heaps of education, thriving on that education, which is great. What do you do now to keep yourself up to date? And, and do you still do education now yourself? Well, you know, actually, it's funny. I just downloaded a new software program where I can edit. Um, so I used to uh, edit on Avid. Mm. You know, and then, but I, you lose that skill after a while. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I think I could learn how to edit again. So I just downloaded a new program, and I think it's called ScreenFlow. Ooh, okay. I was I'm like, gonna oh, do I up. do ScreenFlow? Do I do Adobe? And so ScreenFlow was cheaper, so I did that. So I'm yeah. learning how to edit. So yeah, always learning a little bit of something. That's fantastic. And is that the advice you'd give to our younger audience as well that maybe want to become a journalist, entertainment reporter in that field to go and study? Or do you think maybe go do work experience? And I think a combination of study mm. and work experience. Uh, and of course, everyone who, most people, I shouldn't say everyone, most people that do come to me for advice, especially about, you know, uh, TV, they want to be on TV right away. Oh, they yeah. don't understand that it takes work experience, it takes getting coffee, it takes getting up early. Showing your dedication. You're not going to be on TV for at least five years. And if you are, hey, good for you. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it wasn't that way for me, and I've found that a lot of people get discouraged. Mm. And just, you know, don't get discouraged. It'll happen. It will happen. Eventually. Yeah, yeah. you just got to do the hard yards. Yeah. The graveyard shifts, as we said. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, this is exactly what this show is about, to really show the audience that, hey, you know, you're seeing the whole glamorous side of TV. Yeah. But there is a lot of hard yards behind mm. it. But really rewarding when you get to it. You yeah, know? I wouldn't. We're both you know, so passionate about our job. You all, just got to get there. All the early mornings, all all the travel, all, you know, it it's all worth it. Mm. You know, it's great. I've had a Great run, great experience. Now you wake up every morning loving what you do, don't you? (laughs) I do, anyway. (laughs) You know what? I I do. I wake up pretty happy every day. I'm sure there's some days where it's like, okay, well, I just got to get through it. But then you feel better once you've actually done it. I have a few days like that. Yeah, hard to believe. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, there you go. See, guys? Look, going to the truth right now. And back in 1999, you were hired as an entertainment reporter for Northwest Cable News yep. in Seattle, Washington. Mm-hmm. But I'm actually going to bring you back before that now. Is it is this what you always wanted to do when you were a kid? Was it always in the entertainment, in the arts, or was there another dream job in no, mind? No, no, this was it. Wow. This was it. I, I knew I wanted to be involved in TV in some ways, and my father mm. even tells a story I was always right in front of the TV, parked there, and he's like, why do you watch TV all the time? And he says, I turned and said, well, I'm going to be working in this field. And I was probably 12, 13. So dedicated. I don't recall that. Yeah. (laughs) He says it, and he's very proud that he remembers it. Um, Because now he's like, my son's on TV. (laughs) I know. I know. Uh, So, yeah, I did want to do it. And I've always had a love of the arts, especially Mm. uh, film and television. And, you know, I love trivia and I love all the gossip. And I always would buy the movie star magazines. Yeah. And just just devour it. So I've always had a passion for that. Honestly, it's so crazy. It's so lucky because there are so many kids that don't know what they want to do at such a Mm. young age. And, you know, (laughs) even for me, I'm like so grateful every day that I knew what I wanted to do at a young age. <laughs> right. And we went I mean, for it. You know, it's like, oh, I just decided one day I'm going to be a gossip guru. Hey, yeah. why not? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you just keep your eye on the prize and go for it. It's a fun job. You know, something I, I you know, I love about entertainment and let me know if you feel the exact same way is that, you know, all the hard hitting news, it's very negative and, oh, yeah. you know, sad and it, it's oh, I can't watch the evening news all the time. It's mm. just it makes you feel really bad just about the world and about people. But entertainment, I find, you know, even if celebrities are breaking up or whatever, if there's even a negative story in entertainment, it's still a little more lighthearted and yeah. feeling fun and you know, it actually makes me feel good. I don't know. Do you yeah, feel the same? I absolutely feel the same way. And I always say that, you know. Bad news is news. That's true. And yeah. So that's what they all report on. You know, because if it was feel good, feel good, feel good, I don't think anyone would watch. And that usually comes in the last two minutes of the show. It's yeah. oh, look at that cute panda. Yeah, from the zoo. Oh, yeah. look at Nicole and Keith. Oh, mm. you know, that's in the last two minutes. Well, 
you still have what about for the rest of yeah, the hour? Yeah, you still have 54 <laughs> minutes of there was a car crash, someone was murdered, someone mm. did this, that, the other thing. And you know, especially during this last year when the news has been important, you know, with the COVID and of course with me in the U.S. elections, uh, it just was a major downer. Yeah. But I became addicted to it. Where I'm just like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what and else is there? And then why am I so depressed and angry? Oh, I've been watching nonstop news. News, yeah. Well, it's not like so I, I try found... to be a little more selective now. Yeah, me too. Even with social media, whatever's on there mm. as well, people are posting really negative things now too. And, mm. But that is something I even found when I did my journalism degree that everything was so negative, and I'm like. Okay, I'm glad I'm choosing entertainment because I don't want to do that. And I know, you know, there are a lot of journalists out there and I don't know how they do it and live day to day. But, you know, entertainment, though, and I'm so grateful that yeah. I chose it each and every day. But, you know, we do need some reporters out there telling the actual hard-hitting news. <laughs> so I really take my hat off to yeah, those guys. Yeah, good for guys. you. Yeah. You go ahead and keep that job. We'll keep yeah, ours. We don't, we don't want it. So... <laughs> And North West Cable News yeah. provided 24-hour coverage, and mm. I did do a bit of research in Seattle, Washington. You, that was, yeah, downtown Seattle, and then you moved to Hollywood in yeah. 2004. And I've, I've done a little research that Seattle to LA, about a three-hour flight. If you were to drive, it was it's like 18 hours or something. Yes. How was the move for you? Did it feel like a whole different world? Because I've, I've been to LA, but I've never been to downtown Seattle, so I don't well, really know what I it's like. Well, I drove. Uh, 18 <laughs> that's hours. What you're asking. Woo. I took two days and with all my possessions in my car and had a friend I was going to stay with down there. And yeah, I didn't have a job when I went there. Ooh, and that so, must have been yeah. Stressful. <laughs> yeah, because I'd been, you know, on TV being an entertainment reporter for five years and traveling a great a great deal and then when that job came to an end I decided well I might as well go to Los Angeles because I'm a great writer I, I could edit at the time <laughs> um, and so that's when I got into TV producing I got my first job was at the E Network I was yeah. like wow that's, that's pretty good <laughs> and they had a show back then that was a paparazzi TV show. It was, what was it called? Oh, it was called Celebrities Uncensored. And it was one of the first of its kind before mm. TMZ, before all that. It had a, a distinct sense of humor, but it was kind of snarky. And so I, I wrote and produced that with other people for about a year and a half. And then as that show was coming to an end, I was able to go to Access Hollywood. And then I went to... Um, e, no, Entertainment, entertainment Tonight. tonight. Entertainment. Yeah. yeah. So I Some had a really good shows. run there. Yeah. Did it feel like, you know, because I know LA is very hustle bustle and everything's going on. Was Seattle <laughs> the same? Because as I said, I've never been there. <laughs> well, no, Seattle uh, it was mostly known for music, mm. you know, the grunge scene. You know, it was probably before your time. Probably Just nod your head. And mm -hmm. coffee. It's good for, uh, you know, grunge music and coffee. And it was very different. However, I'd been to Los Angeles enough to kind of know the drill. Mm. And I was lucky enough that I wasn't knocking on doors trying to get back on TV. I pretty much thought I was had got that out of my system until um, I got a job, you know, with the Today Show. And that was just a fluke. You know, it's not... You know, it's just who you know, and it was mm. just timing. Sure and is. Someone didn't show up one day, and I'd met someone, and they called me up and said, "Oh, can you fill in?" I'm like, "Sure, I can do that in my sleep." Mm. And so it just caught on, and I was very, very lucky. So then I'm back on TV, and it's been a good ride since then. Yeah, sometimes you just got to do the hard yards, even behind the camera, and producing, writing, and then who yeah. knows? Just one day, if you've got yeah. the little bit of experience from in front of the camera. Who knows? Maybe yeah. one day you'll get on. I know Shelley Horton had a very similar um, beginning as well with trying to get on TV. Mm. So just sometimes someone is away and you got to fill in. Mm, it's true. <laughs> and I know a lot of our audience, you know, would know E and Entertainment Tonight, Access Hollywood. They're such huge shows that, you know, I, I want to say everyone knows. Most of the people know. If people watch those kind of shows then they know those kind of shows. I, yes, if they're you know? entertainment fans, yeah, that's what I'll it's, say. It's like any shows, like even with The Jungle or mm. any of the, if you watch those kind of shows, then you'd watch those kind of shows. And if you don't, you don't. Yeah. I've that's learned fine. that. I used to kind of be like, how can you not know entertainment tonight? And I was like, well, I'm watching the ABC. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay well, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. You know, so. Getting your news elsewhere. There's a little something for everyone out mm. there. 
So there's obviously, you know, some obvious things in common with those shows, but is there anything that maybe you could share with us that you found that they all do differently? Oh, gosh, they all do differently. Well, they all have unique points of view. Some Mm. are, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheek, as I said, a little bit snarky. Some treat it very, like, at Entertainment Tonight, it was entertainment news, so it had to have a real, you know, the facts are the facts. A lot more serious. Yeah, Mm. yeah, it was fun, but it was serious. And then Access Hollywood was a little more, a little more sense of humor. So you just adapt to different styles. Yeah, I always find E-Network is quite chatty as well. You know, the hosts yes. kind of chat with each other about whatever they just were talking about. So yeah. I think everybody does it's it changed. differently. It's changed. That's a long time ago. Now they all kind of blend in mm. the same now. Well, it's still all entertainment news, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you are now based in Australia and doing your cool... Well, you're on pretty much, I, I swear I see you everywhere, just saying. Like, I'm like, oh, he's on this and he's on that. Did you ever think back then that you'd actually be based in Australia? No. Because as you said, you kept coming back and forth. No, no, no. One time I had a plane ticket for, I was going to go on a trip. And so then they gave me a voucher for like $2,000. And I thought, well, where wow. could I go for $2,000? I could go to Australia. And so I looked it up, and I thought, that's what I'm going to do. I never did it, and I think I lost the ticket somewhere along the line. Oh, no. But I'd always (laughs) wanted, of course, to come here. Um, I don't know if you know, but Americans and America, uh, there's just such a love affair with Australia and Australian Mm. people. And I don't don't know why it is, you know, if, if an Australian goes to America, they are just almost revered and they're just like oh my god it's like in that movie um what was it um was that movie love actually or something like that yes. where, the, the, where the guy with the english accent went to that small town and every word he said they were like oh my god yeah just it's like that with australians was, yeah when we go we to really america don't worship people from england <laughs> <laughs> there was a war a long time ago um but australians yes yeah, just the, a fascination And I'm guessing with so many trips back and forth, you actually want to come to Australia, not just for work, and actually enjoy it for what it is, right? Mm, Absolutely. And uh, I did have the privilege of, I brought my parents down here, and I showed them around a little bit. We went to Cairns. We went to the Great Barrier Reef. Mm. Went to Manly. Saw you you do the City Harbour Bridge as well. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, gosh. I've I've been meaning to do that, and I've lived here my whole life, so... Yeah. Good for, for, good for you for doing it. Yeah, it was intense. Scared it of was, heights or good? Uh, I'm scared of heights. Uh, <laughs> Hold on but, to your life. Yeah, they, they assured me that I was chained in properly. But it was raining and we still did it. Mm, well, good on you. Yeah, right? thank you. Well, sometimes you just got to book and you just got to live with whatever weather it has, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So you are kind of in between still L.A. and Sydney, you know, every now and then because I'm sure your family's still there, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been here for mm, almost a year now, I made the decision not to go back to Los Angeles when uh, COVID hit. Yeah, and good idea. And it was just, you know, I just thought I, it might be best just to lay low here. Mm. And uh, I think that was a very good decision. Otherwise you might have been stuck. Yeah, mm. well, yeah, oh yeah. And once, once I left here, I could not come back here. Oh, I don't right. have that kind of visa. Mm. Once I left, It'd be like, yeah, you can't come back. You're just going to have to permanently do crosses yeah. from L.A. <laughs> yeah, but it's fabulous, fabulous place to be. Mm. So what are you missing most about America, do you think? Mm. Taco Bell. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah like, we don't have that here. I wish we you know, did. But no, no, no. They're starting to come Starting here. to come? They have one in Blacktown, and they have one in a few other smaller areas that I've looked at and I don't drive and I don't You've have done a, a little car. bit of research. So I've been like, if I took the train, maybe I could go there. I don't know. I do love Taco well, Bell. It's a just a train it's the, station in Blacktown. So yeah, it's just the junk food that I love. Mm. And so I do miss Taco Bell. And you'd think I'd miss something like, oh, you know, Hollywood Boulevard or, yeah. you know, this, but no, no. not really. Food. So you're food. a foodie. I love food. it. Yeah, Taco Bell. I'm such a foodie. <laughs> right, it's something I think everybody can relate to, yeah. is being a foodie. Yeah. Especially through COVID, you know? I'm, yeah. Were you one of the people that just ate heaps? Because I was. <laughs> I did eat heaps, and of course, I didn't work out, and so I'm still trying to, you know, lose my COVID weight. Oh, it's you still been... look great. And bless your heart. Where, where God love you for a liar, you <laughs> no, know? Seriously. I can seal it under floral. Yes. Yeah. 
And you still got that American accent really strong. Have you been working on your Aussie accent at all? You know, <laughs> I, I have tried. You know, I watch Kath and Kim. And because uh, that's that's the broadest. That's a good yeah homework. But still no, no. no. And, and it's so funny that you mentioned that. I I don't feel as if I have a strong accent. That's so funny, isn't I it? I know. And, but people say I have quite a strong accent. Mm. But it, it it okay. I do admit that I do have an accent. But you know, it's not like I'm from the South where I talk like that, or I'm not like from New York. You know, it's up there in Brooklyn. You know, mm. those are strong accents. I just have an Oregon where I'm from and California, maybe a, a slight drawl and maybe mm. some R's and a little bit laid back. And I'm also very excited, so maybe it is a strong accent. I know I don't like to hear my voice, oh, I'm and I don't like we, to watch myself. I'm guessing either. we still have an accent to you as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is so funny, You're like whenever I interview Americans, even like over Zoom or Skype, they're just like, wow, I love your accent. And to us, we don't think we have an accent either. And then but you, you have don't... a very um, um, soft and pretty accent. Thank you. I've never gotten that comment before. Well, now you have. I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> I like oh, it. Oh, no, it wasn't meant as one. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> totally <laughs> an insult. <laughs> yeah, you got a soft and pretty voice. Ugh. No, no, you have, Nobody a very, wants that. You have a very, um, very lovely voice. Oh, thank you. Well, it's good I'm in the field I am. Yes, in. there you go. <laughs> now, we do have to talk about I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Yes. Not just because it's a huge show that everyone knows. Yes. But also because you have said in the past it is the best experience of your life to date. Can you please explain why? To me, yeah. I'm like, really? Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Everyone will say that. That is a big um, comfort zone. <laughs> it was... Uh, Jump phenomenal to be surrounded by total strangers you know 15 other celebrities and uh, to have your phone taken away you have no internet you know you no go on, TV on, to check the on news. an extreme diet you know yeah. uh, that I wanted to lose a little bit of weight but I, I ended up losing nearly 14 kilos Whew. I lost more than anyone there because I think I just I have a lot of uh, Fat. No, I don't know. <laughs> Muscle and all of that, but it just really fell off. Um, and uh, to, to be put in those extreme situations, like snakes coming at you. Mm. I got electrocuted a couple times. Uh, you know, I, I have a fear. I'm claustrophobic. So just to have bugs all over you, to have, you know, cro swimming with crocodiles. I never had to eat anything. Oh, that is a good thing. I know. I don't know how I escaped it. And I, I never know and I never brought it up when I was there. You know, I never ate anything. <laughs> Give and me it, something. And if someone ever said, "Have you eaten?" I'd be like, "Don't put the idea in their head." I don't want to. I went it. through a lot of other extreme things, and that's you know the eating trials were voted on by the Australian public as well. So maybe they just saw pity on me or I'm really sorry, wanted me tortured. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, with electrocution. But th the thing about the the jungle also was to have won the jungle, which never ever did I imagine. I swear, hand to God, I never thought I would win. Ever. <laughs> ever. I was planning my vacation to Cape Town. I was like, TikTok people, I got to get to Cape Town. I want I want to see some of Africa, but it didn't happen. And I'm just so I'm so grateful that it did because seriously, it's voted on is voted by the Australian public. So that's, thank you guys. That's <laughs> no bull, it really is. Mm. Wow. Did you like, because whenever I watch the show, obviously you guys are starving. Like you're not starving. eating, not eating yeah. much. Before you went into the jungle, did you like just stuff your face with heaps of food? <laughs> Big mm, buffet? I wish, you know, I, I had heard from other celebrities, you know, there's like two or three days or a week of detox, you know, because if you smoke or if you drink coffee, your carbs, sugar so i went that route i made myself drink decaffeinated coffee um i tried to get rid of a lot of sugar so you actually got ready all for of it that. That's i great. really did so i was smart that way however i tried to look in really good shape when i went in because you know you're gonna have your shirt off and, and mm. whatever and so i did that but then the weight fell off me and then I looked like a cadaver. <laughs> My friend Luke Jacobs, he went in and I saw him come in. I was like, oh, roly poly. He specifically put on weight. So that he looked better at the end? So then he would, Smart. the big reveal and he looked fabulous. 
Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> catch twenty two. I don't know what I to know. tell you. I know. To me, I would have. Yeah, I, I would have done what you did and yeah. actually prepare yourself because you I could have lived. I could have lived a little better off my body fat because I was just hungry the whole time. And just like the show, we ha there's no sneaky food. There's no pizza behind the scenes. There's no nothing. Oh, nothing. I definitely didn't think that. Nothing. Because you guys look starving, and yeah. you know, once you get past that point of starvation, and then you know, you just really tired and fatigued and I really take my hat off to you guys. What do you think you missed most in the jungle? A proper bed? Proper oh, food? Oh gosh, what did I miss? You know, towards the end I really didn't miss much of anything. Wow, I it's really funny didn't. that your body and I mind Maybe gets... pizza, I like pizza. Um, you kind of get past that point of needing yeah, anything, right? Yeah, and it was it, the transition back into everyday life was uh, challenging, you know, it's like, oh, you feel overwhelmed if you get three texts. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know. I'm too popular. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's very it's very odd, but it was a nice break. I I would really like it if they did. I'm a celebrity all stars. Ooh. I think that would be great. I would love that. Get like all back stars, together. like winners and you know top favorites. Mm. I think that would be really exciting. See who I think, wins out of the winners. I think good TV. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, everybody, if you haven't already checked out. His season, it would, it's on YouTube, some snippets. Ten play. And yeah, ten play. A little, little bit of a shout I watched out it there. recently on my exciting Saturday nights. Just to laugh at yourself? <laughs> Just to watch and be like, oh, yeah, okay. That is, a, I f find, you know, because a lot of people might just watch the first episode just to see who's going into the mm. jungle. But if you really keep with it, you know, as we said, you, you, get, you get starving and fatigued and it's just a really good... You know, I, I even think it's a good mental health cleanse. What do you think? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Just you only have the other people in the camp for entertainment to talk with. You know, you don't have the obstacle of television, of news, of the internet, of your phone. Mm. There's no picture taking. Of the distractions yeah. in life. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of mental health too, this is a good segue because oh. on the side of your busy working life, you I didn't see that coming. Yeah, well done, you. Thank you. Well done. You are also an ambassador for Beyond Blue. Yeah. And I am a huge supporter of Beyond Blue, and I think oh. there's so much more that we can do in this world to really help them out as well. So everyone, go check out Beyond Blue if you haven't already. And on your public speaking page, it does say that you've experienced bullying firsthand oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. actually overcame depression. Mm. Please share with our audience how did you get through that, and you know, on add on to the other side, stronger. I'd, I, I think you're a lot stronger now. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, I don't. I'm not one to really talk about, you know, being bullied. Uh, I think a few years ago, everyone came out. Oh, I was bullied. I was bullied, and stop the bullies. And I was like, yeah, stop the bullies. Yeah, it, it's a very painful chapter of mm. my my life. I was kind of. You know, you ever watch Little Britain? I was the only gay in the village, and everyone seemed to know that I was gay before I did. And I, uh, you know, every day at school was a living hell. A living hell. Mm. I was, grew up in small towns, and so I was either spit on or hit, called names every day. Wow. And so, yeah, I, I really had to work hard to get over that. And I still think in, in a lot of ways, it's, it still is with me to yeah. a certain extent. Absolutely. And uh, luckily I was able to move to bigger towns. Um, and then finally, it's so strange, Lauren, that what was my greatest, what I viewed as my greatest weakness um, which was a large personality, to be vivacious, to be interested in showbiz, that that is what has made me a household name yeah, or has, a has, has gone to uh, make me a strong person and it's been my career. Mm -hmm. So that I, th I find that very funny and I think that that's almost the best revenge. It, it I don't need is. revenge, but isn't it funny though mm, that I, the, <laughs> I would be loud and vivacious, some t some say flamboyant on TV, and I've made a career out of it. The yeah. very thing I was bullied for as a child. Well, we're all put on this earth, whatever you believe in up there, 
we're all put on this earth for a reason. You know, yeah. we're all made unique for a reason and we should all just channel that. You know, be yourself. You shouldn't be having to be someone else just to make other people happy because no one, not everyone's going to be happy. It's There's tough. still I mean, going to be bullies are, and haters kids out Kids are kids there. and, you know, it's it's just the way it is. I, I, fe- I definitely feel for that anyway and in terms of depression it kind of runs in my family so I've I've battled it and had a lot of insecurities over the years so I always believe in you know talk therapy talking to someone Um, over the last year of course with COVID a lot of people have just not known what was going on Mm. and not known what they were feeling or feeling the you know feeling blue feeling depressed and you know, it's so funny because as an ambassador for Beyond Blue, I'm like, you know what? Find a mate to talk to. Go ahead and just talk to one person. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Mm. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was like, my career has come to a standstill. I can't go out. I can't leave the country. I didn't want to talk to anybody about it because I don't really like to talk about my problems. So <laughs> it was kind of like, well, here I am an ambassador of Beyond Blue encouraging people to talk about their problems and I don't want to talk about it. So that was Mm -hmm. a a real wake up call for me that you got to practice what you preach and it is hard and it's especially hard I think for men to talk about depression or feeling blue because as a society men equate depression with weakness and no one wants to be weak. Mm. Even I, I do it. I do too. I just something I keep to myself. But you have to plow through. You have to find just one person to talk to. Cool. So I'm so glad you're here today for oh, me to I'm talk so to. I'm so glad to talk to you too. <laughs> it, it is something that a lot of people do say. But as you said, it's so much harder yeah. to do than just, you know. Yeah. Because it is something that you just want to keep inside yeah. and just be with your thoughts. So yeah. do you do also like meditation and things like that? Oh, I try. Keep- you know, I, tr- <laughs> I, I try, you know, to meditate. I'm like, oh, surely it's been 20 minutes i'm like it's been two well all right and it's, your mind wanders uh, and thinks I don't, about something but else. i do try to zone out i like classical music so i'll just Ooh. put on classical music or i'll put on a movie i've seen a million times just to kind of numb the background yeah maybe a good comedy that makes no you laugh. i always no? put on silence of the lambs really oh, mm. okay well, what a legendary film i love uh, that movie actually uh, i know <laughs> It's my favorite film. Wow. I, there you go, I, guys. We learned I something just, new. I know. It's <laughs> twisted, but I just, I think the acting is so sublime and the uh, story is so, it's so intricate and clever and twisted. Yeah. I just, I just love it. And so, and it's one of those I can put on the TV and I can go, go in another room and come back. Oh yeah, that, that's the part where he puts her in the dungeon, you know. And, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, that's when Clarice yeah. does this. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not like I have to pause it because I've seen you it a million times. You know what happens. Yeah. And amazing acting in it too. Yeah. Like, I, I, quick fact, I don't know if you know as well, because uh, my mom did acting lessons way when I was a little girl and um, she had to do one of the scenes from it. You know, when she's sitting down and he's in the cage. Yeah. And he does like this sound that was just he just did that in the moment it wasn't even in the script and yeah. that's like one of the one of the scenes i cringe at the most just yeah. because he's like so into the character he's, like he's quite terrifying oh, excellent I'm, i mean good character choice for yeah. the people that i had him <laughs> but i really really appreciate you speaking up about all this sure. today because i know that it is difficult and it even shows how bullying has changed over the years mm. too because as you said you were spit you were hit on and then these days Social media is a big thing, just, and now I, kids are, you know, bringing it home, which I think is the one of the hardest parts. But when I hear about kids being bashed yeah. up and things like that, I'm like, my bullying was nothing like that. So, it's twenty four seven now. Yeah, I mean, and, that, and that's the thing uh, with social media, Facebook, Instagram. You know, people can chime in and say whatever they want, or they can, you know, spread lies. It's just. You know, social media can be a very, very dark place, and I, I, I'm not all in. I'm good. Take breaks. Yeah, I'm sixty percent in. Mm, me too. And I'm, as you know, you you were very tenacious. I I'm a fairly private person. Yeah. I'm I'm the Which most. Which is a good thing in this I'm industry. the most non-private private person I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I I feel as if I put it out there, but there's some of it I really don't. Mm. Um. And so social media is kind of a little warts and all. And I can't be one of those people that 
put on, you know, bright, shiny pictures of and have people think that I live this, you know, super charmed life because mm. I don't. Yeah. You know, I, I have a nice life, of course, but I'm not going to be like, oh, here I am at, you know, I don't know, wherever. It's just not me. Some premiere I don't, I'm or not some after party. I'm yeah. not out to impress anyone. Yeah, just live your life. <laughs> you know? Just do what you love to do. That's the most important Yeah, life, that's the it? one thing about getting older and it's, you're just kind of, you get tired. You're like, I'm not out to impress anyone. I really don't care what you think. Mm. It's good that you are, you know, only about 60% into social media, because mm. so am I. I'm like, I just use it to post. I don't really want to check anything, mm. you know, because especially in this industry, and I get it, I'm sure you do too, mm. a lot of people in the public eye get it, which is haters. People mm. putting their opinion in on social media, and it's good that, you know, I take breaks too, so I'm like, I don't need yeah. to look at that. I'm just doing what I do. I'm doing it for the fans. I don't care about the haters out there. So are you the same? Kind of just ignore it? Um... Uh, mm. It can sometimes ruin your day. However, mm. I, I'm lucky enough that I don't get a lot of that. And if I do, I just block them immediately. Good. I love, I don't, I I don't, love the block button. <laughs> I'd rather have less followers than some people who say nasty things. Or if people start fighting amongst themselves. Mm. And I'm just like, whoa, whoa. Take it to someone else's page. Yeah, I don't get need it on my. Mind. I don't need a fight on my page. You know, I don't want to you know, break it up, people. Mm. And... Uh, I wanted to, I just recalled the one thing that I did learn from the jungle the most was patience, patience and acceptance. Yeah. That it was so beyond my control what went on there in the jungle that I just learned to uh, roll with the punches. And so that was a really wonderful thing. So it's something you've brought into your yes. life now. That's yes. That's good. I Besides, love that. oh, bad lighting all of a sudden. I know. It was like, <laughs> we're worried no, about it was going to rain. It's and now called the sun. <laughs> you got a spotlight on I you. I suddenly <laughs> went from looking semi good to like, rah, the crypt keeper. <laughs> the, n the natural sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> you got a spotlight wow, on you from the sunlight. sun. Well, speaking of your followers too, uh, it, was pro it was probably a week ago that I checked these stats, so it's probably more now, but you had over 51.8 thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah, not that many really. Well, it's still a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But you know, you, other people I'll look and they'll have like 200,000, 500,000. A million. Yeah. 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 D does it ever get daunting and, you know, do you ever have that moment where you're maybe about to post a photo and go, wow, this is about to go out to 51.8 thousand followers? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I have dabbled in the, just starting to dabble in like the influencer area, yes. arena. And that still makes me a little uncomfortable because I, I, still very new. <laughs> I try, I pride myself on being an authentic person. And so, you know, if you're trying to influence someone and it's, it's a, a cash exchange, mm. it, it, it it, it's still very odd to me. Mm. Um, whereas other people, that's their livelihood. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I like that at least, you know, for you, for being an influencer, you're actually using the products that you're preaching about. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people out there that don't, unfortunately. And you're yeah. like, why am I going to buy the product if you're not using it yourself? It's a bit of a, it's a weird world. But I, I love that you're using your, you know, your social media as well in such a great way because I, I really find you're a great role model for a lot of people out there oh, especially you. you know nice the lgbtq plus yes. they have added the plus now i wanted to make sure What's i got that correct i don't know what is the plus so what you, you say educate? l g p b b t q q questioning plus. i mm. i is for intersex i i think so interested yeah inquisitive Cameraman is nodding, so yes. And so plus would mean all-inclusive? Yeah, I think so. You guys can comment below and educate us on this. Right. Well, I remember yeah. back when I was a kid, it was just LB. Yeah. No, LG. And then along came the Bs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, the Bs. I don't know about those Bs. You know, so... Mm. Now there's too many letters. Uh, yeah, now for me. Now it's a tongue twister for me, but yeah. it is. I make sure I try to get it right every single time yeah. to you know include everybody. L G B T Q Q I plus. Yes. I think we are just educated Richard yeah, today. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look up that plus. Yeah. Well, I think they've just added over the last few years. I'm thinking <laughs> years. Oh, I'm really behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, you, Lauren. No, it hasn't been just a couple of months. Thing. That's all right. You sure? Yeah. Plus, 
Oh, like the actual plus, plus. sign. So yeah, it says- Not the I'm, actual symbol, that no, would be- <laughs> No, no, I think they would have the plus, the symbol. Yeah. And then when I've read it, it's like a plus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. just, I've just never heard it. <laughs> The plus. Yeah, yeah. Before. Oh, people actually saying it. Yeah, oh. that's the first time. Oh, there you go. Okay. If I read it, I'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. But yeah, plus. It sounds like. It just sounds weird at the end of a sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds oh, well. like, you know. I need to make sure everybody is included. There you so go. So even though it is a tongue twister, I try to get it all out. And something I found really interesting on your Instagram, a quick fact, and you did mention it very quickly earlier in the interview, is you're a trivia superstar. So, is this just a recent thing, or do you no, love as just I, doing I, no, it in your I, own time? No, I love, love, love trivia, and I belong to a trivia group, you know, where people get together and play board games. That I get so together, cool. and, and we do movie and actor trivia and directors, and we try to stump one another. And uh, there is a, a place here in uh, Sydney, um, I think it's Golden Age Cinema, and they would have a trivia night back in the day before COVID hit, and I was a regular there and aimed to win. And uh, yeah, and I think one day I would love to host some kind of trivia game show. Oh, that would be cool. You know, I can but, see that. But just mostly showbiz, showbiz trivia. I'm really not interested in history. No, me either. Yeah. Do you think being an entertainment reporter really helps you, you win think? those? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I have a, a, a mind for trivial things oh me too I, I, that's really cool when i read that i was like oh, good on him you know it's something <laughs> fun to do in your downtime yeah. instead of just reporting all the time yeah <laughs> we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview richard oh. this has gone like so quickly did um, you have a um, game you want to play i did we're gonna you mentioned that briefly yeah should we play it now yes let's do we it we got it yeah we got we got a bit of time so Oh, it's For, longer uh, than I thought. How many questions are on there? No, it's only in two minutes, so we're good. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really scared him there for a second. It really, I was like, This is something uh. I didn't actually, you know, put by him, but um, I needed to make sure you didn't know the questions okay, beforehand. Okay. So... For our regular viewers, the two-minute hot seat is back. Okay. I've done it for a couple of years okay. because, you know, people were just wanting more interviews, but I had a lot of people question about where okay. the game went. So... Two minute hot seat, I'm gonna ask you several questions in two minutes. It just question and answers and you just gotta pick your preference. So things oh. like beach or pool, skiing or snowboarding. Oh, okay, you know? okay. So I don't really have to I Phone have to decide. Yeah. I don't have to think of anything. Exactly. Really. It's very easy because it's about you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. So it's not trivia. Okay, good. Otherwise that probably would have stressed him out a little bit. Yeah. I didn't do my homework. So you've got to answer as many questions as you can in two minutes. Okay. And then at the end, we're going to see how many questions you answered and then see where you sit on the leaderboard up oh, against okay. everyone else. And as I said, Ita Buttress was on here, but that was an over-the-phone interview, so I'm sure she was a... Uh, it, it, with the delay, it was a little bit longer. Yeah. I will have to find her near the end. I don't know if she all was right, on All right, well, there. let's go ahead what, and then we can figure out this? where I was. Yes, all right, are you ready? Yes, make sure you, I want to be timed correctly. Correctly. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to press start, sort of like Family Feud. I'm going to press start. I love my, how my cameraman's also getting ready. All right. I'm going to press start after I've asked the very first question. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. iPhone or Samsung? iPhone. Apple or Android? Apple. Rap or rock? I don't know. <laughs> rock or pop? Rock. Pop or country? No, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> pop or country? Pop. Uh, beach or mountains? Beach. Beach or pool? Beach. Skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Comedy or action? Action. Blondes or brunettes? Blondes. Sweet or salty? Sweet. Sunglasses or hat? Sunglasses. <laughs> SUV or convertible? SUV. Mac or PC? Mac. PlayStation or Wii? Wii. Singing or dancing? Singing. Dogs or cats? Cats. Italian or Chinese food? Italian. Summer or winter? Summer. Kim Kardashian or Scarlett Johansson? Scarlett Johansson. Johnny Depp or Will Smith? Will Smith. Mall or online shopping? Mall. Cinema or home movie? Cinema. Ice cream or gelato? Ice cream. Cake or cookies? Cake. Cookies or cookie dough? Cookies. Family or friends? Friends. Football or soccer? Soccer. Christmas or your birthday? My birthday. <laughs> Night or day? <laughs> Night. Bus or train? Bus. Straight or curly hair? Oh, straight. Eye color blue or brown? Blue. A vampire or werewolf? Vampire. Texting or calling? Text. Sydney or Melbourne? Sydney. Friday or Saturday? Friday. TV or movies? TV. Starbucks or Glory Jeans? Starbucks. Snow or surf? Surf. Harry Potter or Twilight? 
What was that? Harry Potter or Twilight? Oh, Twilight. Family Guy or The Simpsons? A Simpsons? McDonald's or Hungry Jack's? Uh, McDonald's. Red Rooster or KFC? KFC? French fries or chips? French fries, aren't they the same? <laughs> Burger or hot dog? Burger. Pie sauce, sausage rolls? Ooh, sausage rolls. Tomato sauce or barbecue sauce? Mmm, tomato sauce. Guitar or drums? Guitar. Sneakers or thongs? Thongs. Bike or scooter? Bike. Leather or denim? Denim. City or country? Uh, country. Biting your nails or picking your nose? <laughs> uh, biting my nails. Tattoos or piercings? Oh, tattoos. Backpack or suitcase? Backpack. Pen or pencil? Pen. Mum or dad? Oh, tough, mum. <laughs> Headphones or speakers? Headphones. Book or magazine? Magazine. Boxes or briefs? Briefs. Board shorts or speedos? Speedos. And we're out of No way! No, no. God. It's stressful, isn't it? Well, some of them I'm, I really does, don't apply. Like anything that has to do with the snow, I'm yeah. like, nah, I don't care. I'm not really a snow person. <laughs> yeah, me either. You know? But yeah. Yeah, you're more of a sun yeah. guy. Yeah. How many questions do you think you answered? I in think those two I minutes? answered 33. Oh, a lot more than that, believe it or not. <laughs> really? Yes. Again, uh, 42. More. Yeah, 47. I, just, <laughs> I know, right? 47? No, more. Would 53. you like to know? Oh, you're getting closer. Okay, go ahead, tell me. You answered 63 questions. Wow. I know, you fit a lot into okay, that time, so don't who's you? The mo- who's answered the most? Or how uh, many was the most? 101, believe That's it or not. That's a lot. But I fe- it was her second time on the show, and I feel like she knew what to expect, even though I jumbled up the questions, but I don't feel like she gave honest answers. Like, I don't really think oh, she thought okay, about it. Okay. So, but the second under that was 92, so a lot. So 63, you're sitting 25 oh, on the Rave It Up leaderboard. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'll take it. You're just under Todd McKenney for the second time. Oh, really? I'm yes. under Todd McKenney? That's a first. You're on top that of didn't never happen. Rob Mills. He only answered 57, so that's right. good. Yeah. And where, where did Ida Butcher sit? I'm going to have to look at that later and share with you off air, maybe. I feel yeah. like, yeah, she'd be out on there somewhere. I know that she was. <laughs> I'm proud to be in the same company as Ida. Exactly. Always. Oh, sorry, I touched sorry. your leg under the, on the That's under okay. The table. <laughs> that was a fun game, though, wasn't it? It was good. I liked yeah, it. I liked it a lot. A lot of people missed that, so it kind of gives a little bit of a more personal touch to there it, you too, go. for the fans to get to know you. And I think, you know, if I was doing it, that could even be a standalone piece. You know, mm. if someone didn't want to watch the whole interview, yeah, absolutely. I'd be like, oh, that could be a standalone, you know, where you have like, oh, quizzes as one of the top. I have gone to your website, <laughs> so it could be you know celebrity quizzes, and then it could be could be that like yeah. a nice two minute read. Well, as I said, I hadn't done the game for a couple of years, right. and just on um, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, um, redid the game again <laughs> after so long i was like oh we're gonna get used to the uh questions again i it's been a long time right. but yeah i ended up just taking the the game posting it on social media just to grab people's attention nice. again yeah there so you I, go it is something i'm gonna do to put the whole interview up but put the also segment on so now, thank you for the great idea do you put idea. these on instagram as well um, or little bits or yes and no sometimes i just put the photo up of right. who we have on and then a quote of maybe what you said to grab you know a little bit of attention as well but i, I it's a good idea well, i'm gonna no, start doing videos I'm just trying to l- always trying to learn thank you I know, i'm always up for more advice you know i think videos is definitely the new thing with instagram yeah. everyone's doing videos so yeah got to get into that don't we right yeah i'll get the cameraman on that (laughs) we are unfortunately getting to the end of the interview but as a closing statement oh here we go and was probably the most important question on this show knowing what you know now what would you tell your 14 year old self oh let me think i would tell them that it's all gonna be all right yeah it's gonna be okay don't stress. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This too shall pass. Mm. That's what I would say. Yeah. Because at 14 was around the time you were getting bullied as well. And yes. And going through that tough time. Yes. Yeah. That's a good advice for I would say that. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good advice for all the young you know, listeners it, too. You know, other people in America would say, buy a gun. <laughs> but I'm not saying that. Okay, good. Yes. But that was for a all joke. the young listeners... <laughs> Two shot pass as well. So, yeah, there you, know, you go. Just, you can, we can get through anything as human beings. I think this last year has really just shown that yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you so you. much for coming on the show. Right? Thank you for being persistent. I know that you're a busy man, so I do appreciate your time and giving us so much of your time too and you're having welcome. us here in your beautiful home. Oh, thank you. You're welcome on the show anytime too. So if you want to come back on and chat about anything... 
need to promote something, I'm okay. here for you. Oh, thank you. I keep, do appreciate that. Keep in touch. That. Oh, absolutely will. Thank you. For everyone watching, make sure to go follow Richard on social media. Yeah, Find Instagram out. especially. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like everybody's on. You yeah. Know, that's their place now. So go um, follow him. Give him some more followers. See what he's doing in the future. But for now, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.